So today I talk about FiMe, which is a build server for images. And um, first, d anybody that never heard anything about Fi? Okay. <laughs> so I started this project in 1999. Um, I, I'm not sure if, or I'm now. I'm sure that during those times. The Debian installer did not have the preceding stuff, so we needed something automatically. And yeah, I installed the first cluster with the Phi. And I always do talks on Phi, or like today in the Lightning talks, I talk a little bit about Draycut, which is used in Phi. So, what was the motivation? A neighbor of mine. She came to me with, a, oh, my Windows laptop is, uh, my Windows desktop is broken. Can you reinstall it? And in the end, I installed her Linux. And I was shortly thinking about, uh, should I use Fi for installing her desktop with Linux? And in the end, I, I did not choose it because I thought, oh, Fi is too complicated. Like the Debian installer, um, I guess, it's not really that easy for beginners because there are a lot of questions, but also FI is not really for beginners. So this was the motivation about thinking about FI. The target group was always advanced sysadmins, but I thought maybe it's possible to make FI usable also for people that are not that advanced sysadmins. <coughs> the idea is, an installer should cover most installations. The Debian installer is really perfect because I think uh, it covers like all different kinds and strange environments. Uh, you can do a lot of things. Uh, you can configure very strange combination of language, keyboard layouts, and so on. But um, I was thinking about an installer that covers like 90 or 95 percent of the installations. So. A lot of special cases can be ignored. And uh, since the Debian installer asked like, I think more than 20 questions, I thought, oh, it would be much nicer if there were only like three to five questions. And I looked at Linux Mint and Magia installer, CentOS installer, and they all ask mass, uh, much less question. And in the Debian installer, we sometimes have also things that are asked uh, during the installation. So it, not everything is asked at the very beginning. For example, the task selection where you select your desktop is done after the base installation. So this was also very important. I would like to have something that asks everything at the very beginning. And then maybe some tool could create a customized installation image. And this installation image sh should run then completely unattended, so you can get yourself a coffee, and when you come back, your machine is ready. So, and there were three things. The customized installation image. Uh, you just boot this image. You do not have to touch anything, and then it's ready, where I thought, oh yes, this is Phi, or Phi may Maybe if I can do this. So as I said, Phi is only, or was until now, only a tool for experienced sysadmins. And you have to adjust several config files. These are ASCII files, but still you have to touch five to 10 config files to make a customization. So how can I make Phi usable for beginners? And that's the beginning of FiMe. And there's a web page, I will show it in more detail later, uh, where you can just click some things and then you can you get your customized image. Uh, this image can be put onto a CD, DVD or an USB stick just with DD. And the customization is just by using the web interface. So there's no need for you to edit a text file, a config file inside Phi. Um, I hope I covered most important things that you want to adjust or a little bit customize. You can add additional packages. I think that's the most important thing that people say, I want to have the normal Debian installation, but with some additional packages. 
and you can select different distributions. So it's not only the installation image for the stable release, uh, you can create three variants of the installation. So this is the web page and thanks to Yuri, he did a great job uh, during the first and second day. He added a new feature that we now have a toggle button. So here, is it big enough or should I zoom in? Okay. So we have a toggle button. So what you see now is just the bare minimum of questions and we can toggle it to more advanced settings. So you have to select or just leave this as it is, a username. Uh, if you do not enter a password, a password will, will be generated and shown to you and sent by email. I will now just type in the password. It's here in clear text. For me, that's fine because, um, yeah, there, there's also a command that you should change the password after the installation. And I do not like to enter passwords twice. So you can see what you typed in and hopefully do not make any uh, wrong mistakes. So for example, we could select the stretch distribution with backports. So we will get a 4.15 kernel with stretch. There are some buttons we can say we want to have some Debian developer tools. This is what I defined in the file configuration. So just a list of packages. And here you can enter your own packages. You, uh, I will select the desktop. So you can have an installation without any desktop. So a very small installation. Um, I will select the XFCE desktop, but all the other desktops are here are with the language. Um, these are just the task packages that are, I think Debian has much more task packages. I just search which are the most common uh, languages. And what I do if I say uh, I want uh, the Spanish language, also the keyboard layout is Spanish. So um, I know there are different combinations and with the local time um, th it's getting much dif more difficult. Uh, this installation will install the clock with UTC. So if you want to set your time, you have to do this manually. So this is this, I want to cover the most common installations. Um, so we select English US, the desktop, and as an example, for example, the Midnight Commander and GIMP. I can add uh, an email address, so if it would take longer, for example, if this service will have success and a lot of people are using it, you may wait for some minutes so your job will be finished. So here are the commands how to reconfigure the keyboard or the time zone, and then you just click create installation image. And now in the background, there's some job, a script, looking, oh, there's a new job, and there's a summary of the configuration, of the web configuration. Down here, you see, these are the, the file classes. I will explain a little bit more about this. But with this information, uh, file configuration is generated. That's what normally the experienced sysadmins have to create. But here, you just click on some buttons and um, it will be done for you. So, um, in the meantime, uh, we have some more advanced features, which I will also show you later. For example, this, this very simple installation just creates one partition, but you can also select uh, that you want to have a separate home partition or using LVM just by uh, selecting this on the web interface. Um, you can also uh, add your SSH public key for logging as root without a password. Or what's very nice, I saw this, there's a new Ubuntu installer does this, you can give your GitHub account 
And then there's a command which receives the public key from your GitHub account and put it into the root account so call, you can log in without password. I think that's very neat. And if you have a repository with your own packages, you could also add this and say, please install those packages from my public available repository. So let's see, uh, as we see, this job finished in 74 seconds. So now this customized installation image is available for download. You can also download the log file. Since this is an installation image, I first have to create a, a partial package mirror. And um, this is done by the command phi mirror. And you can also read the log of this call of the phi mirror. So where a list of all your packages with all the dependencies are available. So you see these are the list of packages and later they are downloaded and in the end it says it created a mirror of one gig of packages. And since I have a local mirror it's very fast. So this is the one part on the installation image, a partition mirror with all the packages. And the other is that th the config space, which you can also download. So this is the config space that was really created for you by clicking the web interface. So if you want to do more things with Fi, you can set up your own Fi server and use this configuration space. And that's also very new, the two commands that are used for creating this ISO image are now also listed there. So first create the partition mirror and then uh, create the installation image. Okay, copy link location. Let's see how good the network is here. <coughs> Yeah, BB, because in, it includes all the packages and with XFCE, LibreOffice and so on. And, and, and the installation environment is maybe about 200 max. That's not much bigger than the Debian installer, what you need to download. So, two, one, done. Um, I have a little wrapper which which calls a uh, fresh KVM machine with an empty disk and boots this ISO image. And then we will see how this installation runs. So this is Draycut booting the image. And now you see the there are, are already some parted commands executed and now the packages are installed and everything runs on and in the end some customization scripts we we use only shell scripts for doing some customizations mm -hmm. and you see the files are downloaded from slash media mirror so this is local on the iso image it would also be possible to create an image without the packages and then give another sources.list file so the packages would be downloaded um, from the internet but this default in the file service, we put everything onto the ISO image. <coughs> I guess it will run for like four minutes. Is something about yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, what I sh will show you now is so this was the simple one. Now I toggle this web page and you will see that there are some more questions you may answer. For example, you can um, give a root password. If you leave this empty, sudo will be configured. Here you can upload the SSH key or give your GitHub account. That would be Mr. Fi for me. Uh, with the partitioning schemes, we have one partition or one partition and slash home in a separate or this version, these two versions with LVM. 
Phi itself can do much more. We could do software rate uh, uh, setups, script setups, but here I want to cover the most common installation, so very simple. We have only four things that you can choose. Default to, to encryption. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> so this that was the partitioning things. This is the new feature where you can add an URL for your local package repository and the rest is the same. You can add packages you like, your email address and then also create an installation image. So um, I normally said uh, by default, I include the non-free Linux firmware. Uh, this is because my target audience is an end user and I want to make it very comfortable for them. So, yeah, they can just install it and do not have these problems. And s since this is not on an official Debian org website, I th that's, uh, yeah, I can do this do with this default. Um, let's see, the installation is still running. Um, so, advanced features. Uh, the next thing after this installation, I will show you how to create cloud images. So, this is currently we creating an installation image. When you boot it, the installation is run fully automatically. The other type of service, FiMe, uh, gives to you is that it creates a um, raw image or some other formats, as you see here, Kuko and whatever, uh, which you can just boot and the installation is already done. Um, but first, see if the installation finishes. Uh, tesh. Ah, okay. These are now the shell scripts that are executed for the customization of like ETC message of today, ETC network interfaces is written and so on. You see the installation took 236 seconds. Uh, it says there are some errors, but um, that's not really true. And it stops here, but we can also disable this. This is only for showing, aha, uh -huh, everything went well. And now we just reboot the machine. And you see the grub. And okay, the XFCE desktop. Uh, Debian was a user with password FAI. And we have uname minus A. This is 4.16, the backports kernel. Was one was installed there. Uh, we have only one partition, uh, no LVM, and uh, I told it to install GIMP, which is not installed by default. GIMP is there, so so this is nice, and the midnight commander is also there. So yeah, and now we just throw this machine gone. And what's very nice with this wrapper script, uh, it creates the, the, the local disk of the virtual machine in slash TMP, which is a RAM disk, and I love RAM. Yeah, it's so nice and fast. So this was the installation image, and now we look at the cloud image. Uh, first, you can say how big should your disk image be? Um, so here I say 8 gigabytes. It's, you will see it's not an 8 gigabyte image that you have to download later. By default, I use the Z standard compression. Uh, anyone who does not know this compression, this is very fast, very new, created by Facebook, if I'm correct. And so, yeah, it's for very big files. and. What, what you should never use is g uh, gzip with sparse images. The disk image is sparse and gzip cannot handle this. So if you compress it and uncompress it, it will be very large. And all the other XZ, Z standard uh, can handle sparse files very nicely. 
So the host name is set, um, the root password, uh, username with the password. Now we want to install Buster, um, maybe with no, with no, um, oh, we also do the XFCE desktop. Uh, any packages you like to have in this cloud image? Desktop in cloud image does not make that much sense, maybe. <laughs> Emacs. Emacs 25. Okay. And now create disk image. This will take a little bit longer because we are doing the installation inside a um, uh, file image. But no problem, I can tell you what other IDs I have. So currently we have the installation and the cloud are uh, virtual machine images for AMD64. Phi itself can also do cross architecture images. So it would be some work to extend the web page to say, please create an ARM64 image and we it would be very nice then to have uh, predefined configs for a Raspberry Pi or uh, all the very different boards, but that would also be possible. Uh, I guess the next thing I will implement is other distributions, because I know people are always asking it, not you, but the Ubuntu guys. Uh, I, yesterday I did the first test with Ubuntu Bionic, the LTS release, and Phi just works out of the box with it. So what I have to do is to integrate it in s these um, FIME processing scripts. Um, ready to go cloud images for the big cloud providers. Um, that's only a, s a different Phi config space that I have to use. Currently, for example, in what I call cloud images, I do not install the package cloud image. Um, that's needed for all the uh, ones. Um, I'm also working in the Debian cloud team and um, this team decided two years ago that the tool chain in the future for the official Debian package will be Phi. Uh, Amazon is already using it, so if you boot or if you use a Debian cloud image in Amazon, Noah Meyerhans did this and he's using the file tool chain for it. Google uh, is, is not yet using it because there was a very small problem in a config file. We had one space too much, which uh, causes Grub to hang forever. And that was the reason why they decided for Stretch to use their old tool, tool chain. But the things are working, so we have the config space also for Google. And also for Azure, um, some people from Kredativ did this and um, so then the Debian cloud team already has the file configuration for all the um, big tool providers, uh, cloud providers. We could also think on a more generic file uh, um, installation image. So it's an image that you would boot up and then enter your job ID of the web page and then the configuration would be downloaded and the package would be just received from the internet. That was one. Uh, so the image would be much smaller because the package do not need to be on the, on the um, installation image. Um, it's also possible to create live images with Phi. This is a little bit more, or yeah, currently there you need some manual work, but um, that should be also possible to use Phi for creating live image and then also to provide this on the Phi Me web service. If you want to customize much more inside the image, you say, oh, uh, I have some Ansible script that I want to execute at the very end, then I say, okay, this is just a starting point, use the FIME service, and if you're happy with the FI tools, then set up your own FI server, create your own configuration space, and then you can do all the crazy things. So how does FIME work internally? We have a web server where there are some CGI scripts, and this is not the build server. So on the web server, 
you click submit, create my image. Um, all the input is validated, so you cannot um, make nasty things. And then the CGI writes or creates a subdirectory and puts two files in it, a config and a meta file, and writes a status waiting for processing. And then the other server, the build server, reads this config. And um, this is just an NFS mounted directory and sees, oh, there's a new job I have to process this, it. I, um, in this processing script, we pass for some errors. What's happening very often that people type in a package that's not available. And this will be detected, and then a new version of the web page will pop up and say, oh, uh, when creating the package mirror, there was an error because this package was not known. Um, sometimes I have to, or, or every night, I create new NFS routes for Buster. Uh, if there are security updates, I have to create new NFS routes for stretch and backports. I have some cleanup, so if a lot of jobs are created, the images are on the disk after, normally I say after one day I uh, just remove the images, so you have one day to download the images. Um, there are three different configurations, etc5 stretch, buster stretch backports. We need, for the installation image, we need a different NFS route, um, but the config space that is shared about all configurations. So it doesn't matter if I install um, stretch or stretch backports or buster, I can, can use the same file configuration. Also for building the cloud images, I use the same file configuration. Uh, the, a new job is, 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 uh, is detected, then a, a copy of the configuration space will be made and it will be customized a little bit. So that are very, very few changes. For example, I have to put the SSH key uh, into your customized configuration space, or the list of packages, or the user and root password. Then we have two things. If we want to create the installation image, I first have to create the partition package mirror, and then create the installation image. For the cloud images, we do not need the NFS route, we just need the configuration space, which is customized a little bit, and then we can just create the disk image. So there's one step less compared to uh, creating the installation ISO. The status on the web page will be updated, log files written, and if the user said, oh, please send me an email if my job is ready, this will also be sent to the user. Then we have the ISO or the disk image, and this will be copied back to the web server where the user can then download it. And since I have a lot of RAM in this machine, everything is run in RAM, and yeah, very, very nice. So, as I said, we need an NFS route, a configuration space, and PHY classes. And this is very central component in Phi, and this is just a list of names. So in Home LVM, this is the class name, the Phi class. We describe, and I think this is that example, Home LVM describes how to partition the local hard disk. This is our very flexible tool where we can do LVM, crypt setups, uh, software rates, and so on. But for the FIMI service, I just created four different types of partitioning, and this is the home LVM example. Um, so we have a list of classes, and as I said, just two commands for the installation image with a list of classes. And for the cloud image, I have to say how big should the disk image be, the list of classes, and what's the target file that should be created. So let's see if this is ready. Uh, yeah, it's ready. So it's 1.1 gig. Is this really the raw? Yeah, raw. I wonder. Yeah. But no problem. Let's download it. Should be fast. <coughs> so this is the normal architecture 
if you use Phi in a client server setup. So you should just look on the left side uh, where you see you need the config space and an F NFS root and a mirror, and these parts will put onto the CD. And if you set up a network installation thing, um, this is how things get from the server to the client. Um, for the software installation, uh, we have another subdirectory called package config, and there you also see uh, several files where the file name is the Phi class. So since in the Phi service every uh, client belongs to the class Debian, it will install the packages that are listed on the upper top. And here we have another class, non-free, so these packages are only installed if you also said, please install the non-free packages, and this is mapped to a Phi class called non-free. And there's another class for AMD64 and so on. Some references. In the past, it looks more like this, when I said, oh, who is using Phi? And uh, uh, during the f last months, I collected some logos just because it's just much nicer. And let's see, the download was ready. We unset the FIME image, FIME 01Z3, 3Z image. I, on the website, I said I want to have a 8 gigabyte partition. So now let's see how big is it. So the file is 8, but since it's a sparse file, it's only 3.5 gigs. And the compressed was 1.1 gig. Now I use my uh, wrapper. Uh, and I say boot from disk, and this is the FIME raw image, disk image, that should be booted up. <coughs> That's it. Debian FAI. Let's see if Emacs is installed. Yes. Uh, GIMP is already there, hopefully. And the Blue Midnight Commander. So. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Questions? I'm using the. Is it on? Yes. I'm using the preseed file and for the normal installer. Do you have a conversion between your syntax and your configuration files and the preseed file, or maybe can you add a download button for the preseed file to your website? Because I think it's rather nice to have it displayed in the website yeah. first. So I'm not using the Debian installer. Um, I use preceding. Yeah, the debconf preceding for the normal packages. You can do this also in Phi, and it's the same format uh, you get with debconf get selections. And what you get is you can download your own Phi config space, and this includes all information you need to set up uh, to, to do this Phi mirror, Phi CD, or the Phi disk image command. But you cannot convert this config into a DI preceding or vice versa. That's not possible. Why not? Uh, be nice. Because, for example, for the partitioning part, I do not like to create from my disk config a, a partment preceding file. Uh, you can pay me a lot of money, I will never do this. <laughs> you, you, you know that the partment preceding is very ugly. 
and very heavy. Um, for other things, yeah, selection of the, for example, the selection of the language, uh, these are the, the normal preceding we, we use. So, and the list of packages, tasks, select. I think it's much easier if, uh, to do this in a file configuration than to create a um, Debian installer preceding. And why use DI if this works for you? DI yeah, works as well for me. Yeah, yeah. then okay. fine, use it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hi, Thomas. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for this new feature in Phi project. It's very nice. And I found very, very great that you have the output of the, of the commands that you use to, to create the, the ISO image or, or the cloud file. Uh, a question that I have is in, in which um, servers are located the, the file that we create, the ISO or the cloud? Is, uh, is a server that you own host or? Trust me. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, currently uh, this is also uh, both the web server and the um, FIMI processing build server is run on two machines at the university where I work as a system, a system administration, so that's also why we have a very fast connection. Um, the CGI script and the shell script that is processing these jobs is currently not open source. So there are plans to do this, I'm not sure when. Um, if, if you want to reproduce the things, you have the config file and you can download the file software and use this one or two commands to reproduce it. Some people said, oh, very nice service I would like to set up in my company. Then please, yeah, contact me. And currently there are no concrete plans to make this background scripts open source, but it will be in some future. Okay. But currently you have to trust me and as you also have to trust all the package maintainers that will be installed there. But you can verify it or say, I do not trust Thomas, but I will just grab the file config space and do this then on my own. Okay. Thank you. There's a, <coughs> there's a question from the internet. Yeah. Um, why not use a proper job queuing system like Grid Engine or similar? Um, I'm, using a, I'm using Grid Engine at work for different things. Um, it's, it started as a very simple project, uh, so in the end it, it's just a loop which checks if there's a new job or not. Currently I do not process jobs in parallel, currently there's no need for it. Uh, if this project will be very successful, yeah, I have to use a queuing system. It's, yeah, a very simple script, but it would be also possible with a proper queuing system. More questions? I have a bunch of questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, first, what is it that you use for partitioning? Um, I'm using a Perl script that we wrote several years ago in Phi, and we, we defined this config file, this package config, and um, the Perl script parses the scripts and then executes the part add and mkfs commands which you can see in the log files. So if you want to see what does Phi do after parsing this, which commands are executed, you see everything in the log files. Right, but so you turn this text into partitioning. Commands, yeah. Commands, but the text looks like this, like with the yeah. spaces and everything. Yeah, yeah, or you can use more or less spaces. <laughs> Or do you like, should I convert it to XML? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, then my next question is, what are you using the NFS root for when you're generating the images? Yeah, the, the NFS root is used only for the installation image. That's when I do in the installation, I need to boot the machine as a diskless client. So it's, it's just what the Debian installer loads into RAM, you, you need a running Linux system, this is our NFS root on the installation image. 
So when you boot the installation image, this NFS root with all the commands we need are started without using the local disk. And then we can do everything on the disk, change root in slash target and so on. But this is the NFS root is the system that is running during the installation. OK, but there's no need for this to be NFS. It could be a local uh, it, 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 It's called NFS root. <laughs> so it's th this is a very common um, that people call it NFS root. And if you have this network installation thing, it's really an NFS root. But on the, you're right, on, on the installation ISO, it's not NFS. It's, uh, it's just a local file system. Yeah. All right. So, and then I think it's my last comment. Uh, so you have, you have like the, the ISO from which you install, and when you install from the ISO, you're installing then packages like on the machine, yeah. and then you have the image, which is like a disk image that has the packages already installed. So you, yeah. like you skip the installing yes. step. Have you thought about having like an intermediate thing where you download an image that already has the packages installed? Um, that's also possible. What, w when, when you do an installation, the f before you can change root in the new system for adding packages, you have to call the bootstrap. Uh, what we do, we call the bootstrap once and create a tar file out of it. So this is our minimal, in, in the former days, it was the floppy disk or base tar GZ file. So you could exchange the minimal tar file with whatever tar file you have. Uh, that's, for example, what we do if we install Ubuntu. We boot the, the installation system, which is a Debian system, and then uh, create the file si local file system and extract a Ubuntu base image. And then we can change root into the Ubuntu or the same for CentOS and so on. Then we can change root into the other Linux system and uh, add packages there. And if you have already a bigger image with some more packages um, added there, it's very easy to say, do not extract the Debian stretch image, but use my image, which also includes other tools. And if you are fine with that, you can just extract the tar file. OK. Any more questions? Yeah. The heading is in German. What? what? The heading is in German. Why? You're heading. Oh, because it's a copy of my German slides. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for th this. And what's also missing? that uh, the, the web page, where you can select German or other languages, it would be nice if people are interested to help to translate them, so it, that it's more easy for people that do not speak English uh, to use the website and create their own installation image with their language. <coughs> Some Someone on the stream said that the fi.me website is not yours, and it's a, it's a hack thing. It's a, it's a scam. You go there and get, you get hacked. Do you have any plans to try to buy the domain? Because it's pretty confusing. The uh, first thing I would have done by seeing that talk would have <coughs> to go to fi.me. Yeah, I, d w I was thinking about, I uh, thought longer about which name should I choose. Uh, I didn't check which web domains are free. And in the end, I thought, oh, do I like to have a different domain name for the service? But since it's only a part of the FI project, I thought, and technical, it was also easier just to host it under a subdirectory. And yeah, if people now yeah, grab the FIME domain and do other things with it, yeah. Then I think one question would be to use a Debian.net or maybe debian.org domain, uh, because people trust much more. I get a lot of comments, oh, this would be very nice if this would be hosted on a Debian machine, but this would be much more complicated because the DSA team has much more restriction what to execute on their machines. Currently, we need root access 
because we mount some things uh, and this is not e or DSA will not would not give me root access on any Debian machine. That's the same problem we have in the Debian cloud team where we want to create the official images for the cloud providers where the Debian cloud team will also not have root access and so there's much more work to get empty virtual machines starting up uh, putting data into it, creating the images, receiving them from inside the image. Uh, yeah, and since on those machines I have root access, uh, that's much easier for me. Right, uh, we are out of time. Okay. So thank you, Thomas, again. Yeah. Uh.